Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, what's going on, sports fans? My name is Timothy J. Jones, and welcome to another edition of the Gumbo Pod Sports Podcast. It's where we talk about some of the hottest topics in all the sports. And before we get started, I ask that you hit the like and subscribe button. It just helps the channel to grow, all right? It helps the channel to grow, (laughs) and I would really appreciate if you do so, all right? So we're going to be continuing our talk. 32 teams in 32 days. We're breaking down all 32 NFL teams. And we've already done a few episodes so far. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and go back into the archive. Check out some of the episodes we've done so far. But today, we're going to be talking about a team in the NFC North. Uh, We've already covered two teams so far, the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. Now we move on to a team that uh, ended on a high note and honestly uh, took that momentum and brought it into the playoffs. I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers. Now the Green Bay Packers finished the season nine and eight and the Green Bay Packers, it was like a tale of two quarters. I guess you can say, you know, a tale of two halves. There we go. A tale of two halves. You had one half where they just looked by this pedestrian as someone walking across the street. And then a second half of the season, they became world beaters. It just seems like everything started to come together. And you look at 2024 for the Green Bay Packers. They they got a lot of momentum going into the new season. You know, they got Jordan Love. A a couple of questions that were asked about Jordan Love, I feel like he's answered. And we're going to be talking about this team and how they shape up in 2024. Let's go ahead and take a look at the depth chart here. I have it here on my screen. And we're going to start with Jordan Love. Uh, You think about Jordan Love. You know, he was a first round pick a few years back. And I want to say in 2020, uh, coming out of Utah State. And, you know, a lot of people were talking about him because it was such a controversial pick at the time. I mean, you had Aaron Rodgers already on your team, still playing at a high level, a MVP type level. And then you draft Jordan Love in the first round. So it was a little bit of a head scratcher. I guess you can say that back in 2020, it's kind of like what happened with the Atlanta Falcons, right? You you got Kirk Cousins, and then you draft Michael Penix Jr. But y- this is more of a head scratcher because Aaron Rodgers was still playing at a high level. But all in all, Jordan Love sat on the bench for a few years, and it was time for him to shine. Of course, we know Aaron Rodgers goes to the New York Jets, and Jordan Love gets the start. And it was a little bit rocky towards the beginning of the season. I mean, it, it looked like, the Green Bay Packers may have made a mistake drafting Jordan Love or moving on from Aaron Rodgers. But as the season progressed, we look at Jordan Love, he looked like a completely different animal than he did at the beginning of the season. He showed poise in the pocket. He he made really good decisions. And the talent around him really stepped up for their quarterback. Looking at his stats, Uh, As I I pull him up, looking at his uh, stats, he had 4,159 yards. Uh, He also had 32 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. So I can tell you right now, the Green Bay Packers fans were extremely excited about what they see from Jordan Love. And I also have to say this. Can you find more prosperity than Green Bay has when it comes to franchise quarterbacks over the last almost 40 years? I mean, you think about it. Since Brett Favre, the Green Bay Packers have had stability at the quarterback position. Now, this is just one season under Jordan Love, but it kind of looks like they may have found lightning in a bottle once again because these stats that Jordan Love put up were just absolutely amazing. There's a lot of momentum that you can build on. I think that if you look at Jordan Love, he's a little bit different from Aaron Rodgers. He's kind of a, you know, he's a boisterous guy when he needs to be, but you never really knows, know what he's thinking. Like he always seems like, you know, he's dialed in. He's never too high. He's never too low. And that's what you need from a quarterback. And I guarantee you just looking at the, the, the players that are around him, they, they want to play for this guy. And um, they have, they have so far. So 
Jordan Love looked absolutely uh, spectacular last season. Started off a little rocky, but he definitely handled his business down the stretch. Uh, I expect for him to build on that momentum. We already know that he has all the tools. He has the big arm. He can throw the ball down the field. He can throw the ball on the run. Uh, he shows a really good pocket presence there. And also, man, you'll never really see him making, uh, you know, too many mistakes when it comes to, uh, you know, being in a pocket. Yeah, there'll be, a time, there'll be a time where he'll throw a pass and you're wondering to yourself, what in the heck was Jordan Love thinking? But he also, you know, he also has amnesia. You, and you need that. You need that as a quarterback. You know, sometimes like when a quarterback starts throwing interceptions or turning the ball over, they start to really start second guessing themselves. I don't get that from Jordan Love. If he throws an interception, it's like it never happened on the next drive. And that's what you need. So Jordan Love definitely is a really good quarterback. Like what I've saw so far, him being in that starting role, I think that Green Bay have themselves another franchise quarterback. You lucky son of a gun. Uh, but we're going to move on and talk about the running back position. We got Josh Jacobs to talk about. Josh Jacobs coming over from the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, if you were to ask me, would Josh Jacobs be playing for the Green Bay Packers in 2024? I would have thought you were absolutely insane because they have Aaron Jones. And we know Aaron Jones is a beast too, but I, I guess Green Bay had other plans. Aaron Jones goes to the Minnesota Vikings, which is a good addition for them. And Josh Jacobs being a new addition to the Green Bay Packers is a plus for them. Now, I'm not buying into that whole, oh, it was an upgrade, Josh Jacobs over Aaron Jones. I'm not going to disrespect Aaron Jones like that. Because Aaron Jones in the NFL has been just as productive as Josh Jacobs. Now, Josh Jacobs, he gets the majority of the load when he was with the Raiders. So when you have a, a running back like Aaron Jones who had to share the backfield, with A.J. Dillon, you know, and you had Josh Jacobs, you know, he basically was the bell cow for the Raiders. So I think that this isn't one of those situations where, oh, it's just an upgrade over Aaron Jones. I, I just feel like both of those guys are extremely talented, and, and this is one of those rich getting richer type things going on. Like, you had a really good running back, now you have a, a good running back again. But Josh Jacobs once again, he is a bell cow back. He's one of those running backs that doesn't have to lead the field. Uh, and I think that this is a plus for him. I, I really feel like he's going to be one of the best running backs in the NFC uh, because of that offensive line of the Green Bay Packers, who we'll talk about in just a second. But I just think that Josh Jacobs, he feels disrespected. He feels disrespected by the Raiders. The fact that the Raiders have been trashed for quite some time. I'm sorry, Raider fans, but it's the truth. They have not been very good. And then all of a sudden, like, you have the audacity to get rid of talent, premier talent like me, don't want to pay me? What? So I think that he comes to Green Bay with a chip on his shoulder, and I think he has something to prove. And he's already talented. So imagine how he feels being motivated to show Raider Nation, to show Raider fans that may have second-guessed him, the organization that may have second-guessed him, that they made a mistake. I expect for Josh Jacobs to have a, an amazing season. And I just think that the Green Bay Packers are lucky to have Josh Jacobs and lucky that they didn't fumble the bag when it came to deciding to let Aaron Jones go. They, they got another or running back in his place that's just as good. Then you move on to the wide receiver room and you got to give credit where credit is due to the Green Bay Packers. One thing you can say about the Packers, they know how to develop players and they know how to find talent i never seen this like besides maybe the baltimore ravens the green bay packers do an outstanding job at developing homegrown talent they're not looking in free agency to try to find missing pieces more than likely they're finding guys that they drafted and kind of build from the ground up and this is the case with their wide receiver room because you look at Kristen watson Kristen watson uh, he was in and out of the lineup last season. He dealt with some injuries that caused him to be out for quite some time. But luckily for the Green Bay Packers, they had some young studs that stepped up. Uh, Romeo Dobbs uh, stepped up in a major way. And you also had rookie uh, Jaden Reed who stepped up, who actually led the team uh, in receiving yards with 793. This is a very talented group. And the Green Bay Packers, they have the recipe 
to win a lot of football games. This is what you call striking while the iron is hot. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to win now when you have young talent like this. When you draft like they have and you have guys that are still on rookie deals and you know you don't have to worry about exhausting your expenses trying to bring guys in, this is win now mode. Because now you can go out here and maybe add a piece here and add a piece there and be able to combine this with young talent and make a run at this. You know, Jordan Love, a breath of fresh air. You already knew that he was talented. He actually just showed you what you already knew. And now you have this young talent that you have for a few years before you actually have to pay them. So I got to give credit where credit is due to the Green Bay Packers for really doing a really good job at drafting guys, getting the right guys in, in the room, developing these players, and having them make noise on the field. I mean, you move on to the tight end position. Luke Musgraves, uh, the rookie out of Oregon State last year, uh, he played really well. I mean, he started off on a high note. Uh, he came out of college, he had an injury, but that didn't affect him when he first got to the Green Bay Packers. You can see right away what the Packers saw. Uh, he has a really good catch radius. Uh, he's a really good blocker. He's a fundamentally sound tight end. And it was great to see Luke Musgrave in action. Now, he did get hurt and he missed a few games. But there wasn't any drop-off because Tucker Craft, another rookie, came in. And he was just as productive as Luke Musgrave. I mentioned this on an episode about the NFC North when I covered uh, the Bears. And I also covered the Minnesota Vikings. The NFC North has the best tight ends in all of football. Like every single team has a tight end that can go get it. Every single team has a tight end that can possibly lead the team in receiving yards and catches. Like this is a talented division when it comes to the tight ends. And you have two really good tight ends. Like Tucker Craft can be trade bait at this point. Like he can go to a team and, and, and really be productive. But both of these two guys inside of this offense with Jordan Love going into his second season as a full-time starter, this is going to be a very dangerous offense. Uh, and they're going to be dangerous every time they hit the field. I expect for them to be one of those 29, 30-point-a-game type teams because, I mean, you have some players that were young, inexperienced, didn't know what they were getting into and now, you know, the, the game is going to slow down for them. They're familiar. They know where everything goes. They know where they need to be. This is going to be a dangerous offense to watch. Then you look at the offensive line. Uh, you got Rasheed Walker. Uh, you got Jenkins. You got Josh Myers. You got uh, Ryan. Uh, you also got Zach Tom. You, look, you got all of these different talented offensive linemen. Look, I think uh, the Green Bay Packers were ranked ninth in the NFL last season when it came to the offensive line. Like you had some guys that, you know, you no longer have, you decide to move on from, but the Green Bay Packers still have one of the best offensive lines in football. When you have a top 10 offensive line, you doing all right. So once again, you look at this offensive line, you look at the young homegrown talent, this is going to be a high powered offense in 2024. If all the stars are aligned for the Green Bay Packers, I think they can win the division. I really do. I think that they have that type of talent to win a division. But let's go ahead and move on to the defensive side of the football and take a look at some of these players. Uh, you know, of course, we know about Preston Smith. Uh, you know, you got Lucas Van Ness. Uh, also, uh, you got Kenny Clark, uh, the big uh, defensive tackle. Uh, you got uh, Quay, uh, yeah, Quay Walker. You got uh, Edrian Cooper. You got McDuffie. You got Jaya Alexander. You got Javon Bullard, you got Xavier McKinney, Eric Stokes. So you look at this team, Jaya Alexander, you know, he is the leader in the secondary. He's one of those top five cornerbacks that everybody likes. You know, a lot of people consider him uh, as the best uh, cornerback in football. Some people would, you know, argue that. But, um, you know, he is a shutdown guy. He is a physical guy. He's not afraid to make a tackle. He's not afraid to get into the face of a wide receiver. You need that uh, in the NFC North with a lot of talent that these teams are building up. So, you know, you look at Jaya Alexander, he is the straw that stirs the drink in the secondary. Uh, I also mentioned, you know, I'm missing Preston Smith. 
Uh, and I also mentioned Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark is a dangerous man. You know, a, a, a big, a guy that big, super athletic, being able to move around. I'm going to go ahead and pull up some of these stats for some of these players here. Kenny Clark has seven and a half sacks last season. Uh, Quay Walker, he had two and a half. Uh, you also had, um, if I'm not mistaken here, Devontae Wyatt. Uh, he had five and a half sacks uh, last season. I mean, this is a, a very, very talented group here. And the, a lot of these guys are going to get better and better. Like, I expect big things out of Quay Walker. I expect big things out of Wyatt. You know, and also Lucas Van Ness. You know, it's time for him to, like, kind of be in that conversation as well. You know, I've seen some some positive things from him. But, you know, you want to see him really get involved, especially him being a first-round pick a few years ago. But this defense is going to be, you know, legit. You know, it was, you know, it wasn't like one of those defenses to write home about last season. I want to say they were ranked like 17th. So kind of a little bit below middle of the pack. But I, I think that when you have some of these guys that are going to, you know, kind of grow up a little bit and get a bit, little bit more experience, you probably would have, uh, a little bit more productivity out of some of these younger players. So I expect for maybe a little bit of an uptick uh, when the defensive rankings uh, come out in 2024. So what do I expect from the Green Bay Packers in 2024? I expect for the Green Bay Packers to be a playoff team. I expect for the Green Bay Packers to be a double-digit win football team. Uh, they won nine games last season. Uh, I expect for them to win at least 10 or 11 this season. And I think the offense is going to be high powered. Of course, you're going to need some things to work out. We all know that uh, you go into the season with these type of predictions and then key players start to go down and that kind of affects the, the number and the records. But I think that if all the stars are aligned, if everybody can stay relatively healthy throughout the season, I have the Green Bay Packers going to the playoffs and maybe having a deep run when they get there. But I would love to hear from you. What do you think about the Green Bay Packers in 2024? What do you think about Jordan Love's first season? What do you think about the addition of Josh Jacobs? What do you think about their defense? Or, or are you looking forward to seeing any of their players take that extra step? Comment down below, like, and share this video. Thank you so much for checking out the Gumbo Pie Sports Podcast. Once again, my name is Timothy J. Jones. Previous episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. You can follow me on X at TJAY Jones 8, and you can check out previous episodes of the Gumbo Pie Sports Podcast by clicking one of these videos right in front of me.